I had actually told them that you know I wasn't going home and they had promised me they said no don't worry like we don't think it's a safe place for you to be but I ended up having to live at home for two weeks anyways because they couldn't find me a placement and the psych hospital couldn't keep me because I didn't have a psychiatric disability and they had nowhere for me to go so they ended up sending me home for two weeks anyways you know I was really just left out of the whole thing like I don't know um, what their behind the scenes decision making was I don't know what the rationale was they were basically just saying we can't find your place to go they can't keep you um, you know, just go home for the time being, you know, you'll be okay. I don't know. <laughs> and also a huge thing was that I wasn't with my siblings. You know, I mentioned that I have a younger sister. I also have a younger, bro a younger brother. So I don't know what happened, but I do know I wasn't with them. Um, so that was a huge decision that was made for me that I, I know I wasn't happy with. You know, I really didn't have any say whatsoever in sort of what was happening. And the say that I did have was really very destructive because I feel like those were the only options that were left open to me. I mean, anything positive was forced. Um, so, you know, I chose to make negative decisions. For example, you know, when, it, when I left care, you know, I mean, they had told me they weren't taking me that back to that group home. It didn't mean that I couldn't have found another one. But essentially, I said, no, I'm taking it back. I'm 16. I choose to live on the streets. It seemed like the whole structure of, of the places was basically built around, you know, not getting yourself in trouble. So doing anything else really wasn't part of the equation because really you were so busy not doing this, not doing that, not doing that, that basically like if you went to school it was like hooray. You know, obviously anything you put more of yourself into will have more value to you. Um, you know, no matter what that is, whether it's a decision or a material object or whatever, I mean, if you put more of yourself into it, it's going to mean more and you're going to take care of it better. Um, you know, and that thing was my life. Um, and also just, you know, no say in the big things or the little things, you know, where I'm going to live, who I'm going to live with, I mean, and, and then the little things, you know, am I going to brush my teeth at 7 or 7.05? I mean, all of those things are decided for me and, you know, that really made my life not worth very much to me to the point where, as I mentioned, I ended up trying to take my own life because it was sort of like, well, if this life isn't going to be mine, it's sure as hell not going to be yours. All the while, while I was at home, um, since I was four years old, I always danced competitively. Like, I, I did ballet. Um, it was pretty much my life. Like, that's what I did. <laughs> it was a huge passion of mine. Um, and, you know, going into care, that sort of wasn't their priority, um, to say the least. Um, so I mean, I just never ended up dancing again, which, you know, like I'm, I'm almost okay with it. You know, I have my own life and my own children and my own family, but that probably makes me more sad than anything because, you know, that's really all I ever wanted to do. And I just, you know, I just see myself as a child, like dancing and, you know, I'm not that person anymore. So it's sad. Yeah, I think the barriers are mainly put up because you are moved from home to home. And I think as a child, you can only deal with so much. You just get used to one day your worker coming and saying, okay, you're moving. You know, throw everything in a garbage bag and let's go. In the foster homes, I often felt as if the biological kids were you know, their main concern, and we were just kind of thrown there. Those, and those people that you have built those connections with, it's still not, I guess, appropriate necessarily to nece like go home with them and spend the holiday with them, as well as it would probably be awkward. <laughs> At one point, a staff told me on the phone that she loved me. I was so excited, I was jumping up and down. I told all the kids and all the staff that this staff loved me. Well, it was a couple hours later, the staff had to call back and say, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean that I love you, I mean that I care for you. Because they're not allowed to say they love you. Once I got to my last placement, things finally started to get better for me. Um, I finally started to feel like a human being, I guess, that I wasn't just a file being passed from person to person. 
So I was able to build that attachment with the staff, um, as well as a therapist who was also the program manager. And he's probably had the biggest impact on me. I love him, like I would assume people love their father. I think I'm much more proud of myself um, that I have somebody to share it with because otherwise you start to feel that it's not a big deal because nobody's here, nobody cares, right? So, so what if I graduated college? And it makes it feel more real. It's not a sad story, it's something that you can actually go home at the end of the day and say, wow, I did it.